Thank you, Brett. I'm Michael Inslicht, Professor of Psychology here at the University of Toronto, cross-appointed to the area of management uh, here at Rotman. A few months ago, my colleagues and I wondered, is there anything good with AI? The reason I ask this, or we ask this, is because if you spend any time in academic circles, you'll notice that AI is thought to be, you know, one step closer to the apocalypse. It's racist and biased. It needs to be regulated. And um, it consumes an incredible amount of energy. So is there anything good with AI? A few months ago, my colleagues and I, um, Daryl Cameron, Jason DeCruz, and U of T's own Paul Bloom, wondered if empathy might be that thing that AI is particularly good at. And we wrote a paper called In Praise of Empathic AI, asking the basic question, can empathic AI increase human welfare? To get at this, first I need to define what I mean by empathy. Empathy is an other-oriented emotion. That's, um, uh, that, that is a, a congruent with the emotion elicited by someone else. So when someone feels sad, you might feel sad for them, with them. Uh, scientists have uh, suggested that there are three facets of empathy. So if you look at panel A uh, in the slide, you'll see we've got one panel called perspective taking, putting yourself in the shoes of someone else. We've got another form of empathy called emotion sharing, uh, sharing, resonating with the emotions of someone else. And then finally, we've got a third facet called compassion, which is uh, acting kind, generating positivity. As you see, although scientists and point the people like me uh, like to divide these three things, in fact, in reality, they co-occur uh, every day uh, in reality, almost all the time, all together. Now, about a year ago, a brilliant Israeli psychologist named Anat Perry wrote an article with the provocative title, AI will never convey the essence of human empathy. And by that, she meant that AI might be okay at taking the perspective of, of a human, uh, if it has uh, computer vision, it might be able to figure that out. Um, but it will never be able to generate actual empathy, which is you know empathic sharing or emotion sharing, and certainly cannot have motivational empathy, expressing kindness or compassion. And that's because AI is not real. By that, I mean it's not a real person, a real agent. It doesn't have consciousness. It doesn't have emotions. So of course, it cannot generate empathy. Empathy is a kind of emotion. I agree 100% with Perry here. Uh, AI will not generate emotion, at least not now. But I wonder if Perry missed the point. Maybe AI cannot generate empathy, but it can generate statements that feel empathic. Can perceivers perceive its utterances as empathic? Can perceivers feel good when AI generates such statements? And the reason I think this is a really, really important question is because some scientists have argued we are in a loneliness epidemic where people uh, feel lonely all the time. Some people suggest that loneliness might be as dangerous or as bad for your health as smoking cigarettes. I think that's overblown, but it, it is clear that people are lonely and that many people don't have friends. If you look at panel C here, you'll see that um, the number of people the percentage of people that don't have a single friend <laughs> went from 3% in 1990 to 12% in 2021, and it's 15% for men, all right? So many people don't have enough friends. Some have many, too many, don't have any friends. Can AI fill the gap? Can AI help people relieve their feelings of suffering? Can it help out in the mental health crisis as well? So uh, my colleagues and I thought, Perhaps yes. And the reason we said perhaps yes is that, at least in theory, there are many uh, negatives about human empathy, many shortcomings of human empathy. Um, first, in a series of studies that I myself ran with my colleague, uh, Daryl Cameron, um, we find that when we give people the choice of whether to empathize with a stranger or not, and we repeatedly ask this question of what they, people prefer to do, people will prefer empathy sometimes, but they tend to avoid it. They'd rather not do it. Second, even if they do it, they get tired of it rather easily. So you look at the rate of people's willingness to empathize, it goes down over time. And uh, there's a term for this in um, clinical psychology called compassion fatigue. Therapists, um, uh, help, uh, those in the helping professions, 
are uh, feel burnt out by the amount of compassion they give. And, and at the end of their day, they're more tired than the end of my day. Um, empathy is also biased. Um, we tend to feel more empathy for our in-groups. So people who are like us, who share our race, our ethnicities, our religions, um, our school affiliations. Um, and we care more about them than people in our outgroups. So people have different races, different ethnicities, et cetera. And finally, when we feel empathy, we sometimes will, uh, will um, uh, entertain immoral acts. We might engage immoral acts. For example, we might put someone who we're empathizing with at the top of a waiting list um, to receive some medical help. And that might help that person, but it's unfair to all the other people who are waiting uh, patiently. How does AI perform? We actually conducted a series of experiments where we put AI through these exact same experiments as we put humans, and AI beat the pants off of humans. AI was never uh, avoidant of empathy. It never tired of empathy. It did not show any bias uh, to in-groups. It, it did not show uh, express more empathy for some groups than others, and it refused to act immorally, uh, to act unfairly after to empathize with a person. So at least in theory, um, empathic AI seems a bit better. Second, AI expresses empathy remarkably well. When we gave AI a series of prompts uh, expressing sadness, expressing suffering, but also expressing joy, expressing happiness, um, the kinds of responses it gave were lengthy, were heartfelt, um, it seemed to resonate with our pains and to celebrate with our uh, uh, joys. And to some extent, it seemed somewhat better, at least, you know, on a case-by-case -case basis. But what happens uh, empirically? What happens if we actually put it to the test and actually have a compare the empathic statements generated by AI versus humans? We can now answer these questions. Uh, there were a series of studies conducted over the past year alone. Um, and in one breathtaking study conducted with actual physicians, and this was published in uh, a medical journal, um, uh, what these scientists did, these medical researchers did, is they went on a, on a, on a Reddit forum, a subreddit called um, Ask Docs. This is a place where patients go and complain about their symptoms, and they get advice from verified physicians, verified doctors. And doctors who, who, who do, are do this out of the goodness of their own heart, they then respond to these patients' complaints. These researchers then took these responses from verified physicians and then uh, gave the exact same complaints to AI to have it generate responses. And then had a third group of people rate the responses generated by AI versus the real verified physicians. And what you can see in panel A is that AI was rated as more empathic. It was also rated as giving responses that were higher in quality. So more empathic and higher in quality than real life doctors. Okay, now that's an incredible study, but it has some problems. First, the raiders didn't know if they were interacting with a human or with an AI, so they were blind uh, to uh, the generator of, of the statements. Um, second, a volunteer physician who is, you know, uh, goes on Reddit at the end of their day, maybe a 12 hour shift, they're tired, they're harried, and maybe they're not trying to be extra kind, they're just trying to answer questions. What if we give an apples to apples comparison? So in the second study that I conducted with my students, uh, a paper that is very close to being published, we had people um, generate statements of feeling, uh, you know, uh, expressing joy or expressing suffering. And then uh, we had AI respond to them. We had human humans respond to them. And in some cases, the hum these humans were expert empathizers. They were trained crisis line workers or very, very select empathic responders. And what we found is that third parties rated the statements of AI as being more empathic, more compassionate, more caring than uh, the human responses. And that was true regardless of whether they knew they were interacting with a human or they knew they were interacting with um, a chatbot with an AI. Now, though, that's also a, great, a good study, a great study, I'm biased. Um, but that's third parties evaluating these statements. What about people themselves who are suffering? How do they resonate with an AI uh, who's giving, uh, doling out some, some help? Do they feel cared for? Do they feel loved? Do they feel heard? And uh, what we, in panel C, you see the results of that. Um, first, all responses by AI are, are, are rated as being more compassionate, 
more caring than human responses. But you also see what's called an AI aversion effect. People who knew they were interacting with an AI diminished the, the felt less cared for by the AI than by a human. But if you looked at, at the two middle bars in that uh, middle uh, that graph on panel C, you'll see that when an AI is, 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 is known and a human is known, they're transparently revealed, people felt as cared for, as loved, as heard uh, with AI as with a human. So yes, it can in fact work. There are dark sides. At uh, first, we need to respond, we need to interact with, with AI only with consent. So you can't fool people interacting with AI. They need to know that it's in fact an AI. Um, People who interact with AIs might start getting used to AI that's indefatigable, um, that gives its excellent an empathy, and humans aren't quite like that. And they might start downgrading their actual human friendships, which is not great. Um, we might start not uh, actually doling out empathy to our friends and loved ones and instead having AI do it, also not great. AI could also be manipulative. Right now, AI is owned by big businesses. What if they manip start manipulating humans to do their bidding? Not great either. And finally, um, an AI that is unconditionally empathic might then lead people to do dangerous things to themselves and to others. Also not great. But nonetheless, my colleagues and I are, are optimistic. Um, first, there is AI aversion, but the more people interact with AI, the better they feel with AI. It also, there's some evidence suggesting that people more readily self-disclose to a bot, to an AI. Why is that? Because people are embarrassed to, 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 to sometimes say things about themselves to their doctors, even to their therapists. They're willing to do that to a bot. Um, people feel as good when they self-disclose to an AI as they do when they self-disclose to a human. Again, really, really good evidence. And already, there are people benefiting. People already have AI therapists, and millions of people have AI friends. So we're optimistic, and uh, we'll see what the future holds.